This is a world scale project. Well, it is the largest pipeline project that's been undertaken in Australia. Everything about this project is big. This project has just brought massive employment to this area, to, to Queensland, to Australia. Just being able to start a project like this and finish it and see it go through all the cycles, it's a wonderful feeling. The construction of the Australia Pacific LNG pipeline from the Surat and Bowen basins to the LNG plant on Curtis Island, offshore from Gladstone, is one of the largest diameter, longest and most successful pipelines ever to be built in Australia. Australia Pacific LNG, a joint venture between Origin, ConocoPhillips and Sinopec, is the leading producer of coal seam gas, CSG, in Australia and holds the largest reserves of CSG in the country. When Australia Pacific LNG was formed, they decided they would appoint operators to deliver the project. The upstream operator is Origin and is responsible for taking the gas from in the ground to the inlet to the LNG plant. And the downstream operator is ConocoPhillips, who is responsible for the LNG plant and the shipping. Well, it is the largest pipeline project that's been undertaken in Australia. The pipeline consists of 720 kilometres of high pressure gas pipeline, of which 360 kilometres is 42 inch. A very large high pressure pipeline. Just the sheer size of the project in its own right is a challenge. The first three years of a pipeline project are all about the approvals and the engineering. The engineering on the project starts early, which is about defining the route of the pipeline and then de designing the pipeline, taking into account design safety as well. Approvals is gaining access to land, the cultural heritage clearances, the environmental approvals, uh, working with stakeholders, working with councils and working with government. I think Origin does a wonderful job of working with the landowners. We also put landowner liaisons in place that stick with those landowners all the way through the project. At the beginning of the project we meet with our landholders, try and build up a personal rapport with them and put across some of the experience that a lot of us have had on the land which makes them feel more comfortable. Then talk through the process of actually putting the pipeline in and what, what will be involved for them on a daily basis. Dealings with Origin from day one like never, never really any great issues. You just ring up one of your land liaison people within an hour or two of ringing up with any sort of query, problem solved. We look after local government, external stakeholders, community groups. We also assist with the local landowners and manage the complaints. So we will be out talking with local government about impact on roads, what road use, permits for local government activities, placement of camps, all those types of infrastructure. So we generally engage with a lot of people across the projects. We as a council can't complain and we, and we quite openly say uh, the, they're the best company that we, we deal with. Once the approvals were in place, the procurement process began, sourcing all the major materials, including the pipe itself. The pipe was manufactured by Nippon Steel at the Komitsu Mill, which is near Tokyo in Japan. The Komitsu plant is a, a UOE pipe manufacturing plant which produces first the plate into a U, then it forms it to an O, then they weld it, we complete the expansion of it, then we have a complete pipe. Then it undertakes a number of rigorous tests, they ship the pipe off to the wharf, it's put on a vessel and it's sent to Malaysia for the coating. Bare pipe arrives into uh, Kuantan, into Malaysia and the pipe is uh, taken from the storage yard into a factory. It's then ground to get rid of the rust and the scale. Acid dipped, heated up, painted. There's two coats. Cooled down. The internal coating is applied and moved back into a stockpile as a completely coated pipe. The next stage was to transport the pipe from Malaysia to Gladstone. Another particular issue we need to manage is the movement of pipe. There's 270,000 tonnes of pipe coming onto the project and we move each piece of pipe about 10 or 11 times, so we're moving about 3 million tonnes. The pipe is delivered to Gladstone Port and brought over here to Collide Laydown area, which it will be the only area receiving all the pipes by rail. We decided to go with the rail instead of trucks actually to, to minimise the impact on roads and for environmental issues and making sure it's more safe instead of by trucks on the roads. By September 2012, mainline construction was well underway. First off, we go through our cultural heritage survey, then our environmental survey, followed by 
our actual survey crew for pegging out the easement. And then we come through with the clear and grade crew who debush, which will take all the scrub off first and then we will come through with the bulldozers, graders, level out our right of way, which basically is a working platform for the crews behind. An area where we place a great deal of emphasis is in the local Indigenous communities. Our cultural heritage program means that we have people in our crews that are looking for artefacts as they go along and if they find any artefacts, they log them and GPS them. Once they have that cleared workspace in, they bring in the pipe and they're stringing pipe along the right of way Stringing starts by bringing two pieces of pipe on a truck at a time, each about 18 meters, and they'll lift it off the truck and lay it down on skids on the ground. We'll string the pipe through, we come through followed by the bending crew. Behind that comes the firing line. The automatic welding line for this large diameter pipe is a massive effort. Over 80 people are involved, dozens of pieces of equipment, it's probably our most technically challenging part. We have to make sure that welding is done to a very high quality. 77 people doing about 100 welds a day. So up to two kilometers of welding happens to that firing line a day. Then there's an examination of the weld. It's called AUT or automatic ultrasonic testing. There's also radiographic, other kinds of things we do to make sure there's no defects. It's that pipe and that weld that's the key to this product working well for 50 years. Then the coating crew will come through, and that's the field joint coating where they sandblast the joints that have been welded, and they apply a, an epoxy top coating to the weld margin. And then followed by that, our ditching crew will come through, they will dig the trench. Behind those guys will be our lowering in crew. The pipes then lowered in, generally uh, anywhere up to one kilometre strings when the terrain allows us. It could be anywhere up to 1.2 kilometres long. Once that pipe is lowered in, we bed and pad it with nice soft soils and then we backfill over the top and compress it. And once it's done, it's simply reinstating that, putting the top soil over the back, making this pipeline in a safe environmental situation so the landowners can use the land again and our pipeline doesn't interfere with it. Environmental and safety issues were a main priority for Australia Pacific LNG. Our safety is our first priority on this project. We provide a lot of tools for people to help them make themselves safe. This is all about people being able to return home to their families at least as well as they started the day. Another area where we place a great deal of emphasis is in the environment. Uh, we have fauna handlers so that if anything gets into the pipeline ditches, uh, we can take them out. We also log and record those. In conjunction with the mainline pipeline construction, the low pressure gathering lines and lateral pipelines were also being constructed. The upstream project is where gas is collected from the ground through gathering systems into a compressor station or a large processing facility. The gas is pumped across to APLNG hub where it's introduced into the main pipeline up to Gladstone. The wellheads are connected to the Reedy hub and at Condebrae Central via a, a network of uh, low pressure polyethylene lines or HDPE lines. Poly lines are welded via a fusion process. The faces are machined. The machine presses those two pipes together onto the hot plate. The two pipes are joined together and the fusion process takes place. Once that's done, they'll do the same as what we do with the steel lines, which will trench, lower in, backfill and reinstate. The upstream project also involved the construction of two high-pressure steel lateral pipelines to transport the gas from the Condebrae Central and Reedy Creek processing facilities to the Australia Pacific LNG hub near Wondowan. The Walibi lateral pipeline is a cross-country pipeline which is different from mainline. Mainline pipeline is utilising fully automated welding process. The Walibi lateral is better suited for manual welding because the rate of progress is different from the main pipeline, plus the speed of start-up of this project necessitated something that could be brought online very quickly. Another interesting method of construction was the way in which the pipeline crossed the Condamine River using a process called horizontal directional drilling. Across the Condamine River we had to do a HDD, which is a horizontal directional drill. The HDD involves setting up on one side of the river, 
putting a pilot hole with a drill head through to the other side, attaching a ream head and then pulling back through until we get the required size of the hole. On the other side of the river we will have a casing pipe and the pulling head will then pull this casing pipe under the river in one go through the HDD hole. Very uh, effective to cross rivers like this due to the low impact on the environment. Transporting the gas from the mainland across the Narrows and Gladstone Harbour to the Curtis Island LNG plant presented a new set of challenges. Australia Pacific LNG and QGC both agreed to locate their 42-inch gas pipelines in the same trench across the Narrows and install the pipelines simultaneously to minimise any environmental impacts on the area. The Narrows crossing was a crucial part of the pipeline construction and required construction of temporary infrastructure, including a 4.5 kilometre long causeway, road and rail tracks for the two adjacent pipelines, bridges across the creek sections, a temporary coffer dam and jetty, dredging a subsea trench for the twin pipelines, and establishing a temporary winch pad, jetty and coffer dam on Curtis Island. Once the two pipelines had been constructed, welded and tested, they were moved into position at the entrance to the coffer dam. The twin pipe pull was completed in two stages. The first stage involved winching the twin pipelines, attached with floats, through the flooded marshland coffer dam. Then, with an appropriate weather window, the Narrows Channel was closed to shipping, and a cable was towed from Curtis Island to the mainland and attached to the pipe header by divers. Then the massive 450-ton Curtis Island winch began to pull the twin pipe strings across the channel. The operation was extremely successful and the twin pipelines emerged at Curtis Island. Following the pipe pull, two horizontal directional drills installed both the Australia Pacific LNG pipe and the QC LNG pipe under the environmentally sensitive creek section. Using conventional trench and bury techniques, the Australia Pacific LNG pipeline was laid from the Curtis Island winch pad to the Australia Pacific LNG receiver station, which would deliver the gas to the newly constructed LNG processing plant. By April 2014, after 18 months of intense work, the final construction weld on the mainline gas pipeline had been completed. A major milestone for the pipeline's team and the Australia Pacific LNG upstream project. Following the final tie-in welds, hydrostatic testing, reinstatement and rehabilitation, the completion of this massive pipeline was a major step towards achieving first export gas at Curtis Island in 2015. So our legacy is to finish this pipeline with people recognising that we have been through, that we have looked after people, our stakeholders are satisfied, it's been environmentally sustainable. The legacy of the pipeline is that less people recognise it's there, the better.